So we could do markdown tools. I mean, would that be under tools? See, this is the problem. It's like, <laughs> let's put it under here. Let's do markdown tools. How about that? Markdown tools. Uh, Lang markdown. This is the toughest part about creating knowledge is you got to know how to organize it. I have been struggling with that all day. Um, all right, so let's right here. Get all ready and then I'll cue a start of the video. All right, title, um, markdown tools. And we'll say subtitle, uh, uh, editors, plugins, uh, sites, and more. <laughs> Do I sound like the ShamWow guy yet? You too can have markdown TPL duck true that just makes it so that you can search my header when it gets rendered for $3.99 <laughs> for the low low price you know what I, my wife and I were talking the other day QVC you know the shopping networks they're just live streamers <laughs> they're just doing it over the television the snake oil salesman yeah that's what I am I'm a snake oil salesman I'm getting you to do crazy things that don't have any value like learn vi who the heck wants to learn that um okay so so yeah live streamers <laughs> the og live streamers <laughs> yeah they kind of are aren't they i scared me personally for markdown since i am a markdown dude still thanks to all the different markdown implementations i use vs code with markdown previewer let's start with that okay let's start with that so Q video so okay guys this is another video i promised you i was going to make about Mar you know markdown editors and plugins and such uh so we've got a we got a we got a sort of a knowledge node started up read me that's got this on here um and hikari knight uh kind of really queued us up well so for how to you know how do you edit markdown and I'll, I'll get to my beloved Vim later, and you guys can make a case for your Emacs later too, uh, and all of that. But let's start with probably the most common editor people will use and pick up to do their editing for Markdown, and that is VS Code. Um, and in fact, let's go quickly find uh, VS Code out here. So VS Code has two really good plugins, um, uh, but you don't really need it. Uh, you can actually get. Do I even have Markdown on here? <laughs> I don't think I do. Let me let me see if I do. If we're really lucky, maybe I have VS Code on here. I don't. How do I install VS Code on sudo <laughs> apt? I'm going to take a shot in the dark. Install VS Code. Oh no, it's co it's called Code, right? I think. I should have done this before the video. Oh well, sue me. Oh damn, I tried really hard. I think it's Code. Oh, nope. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's in the Pop OS proprietary repo. Yeah, I, I'm not in the mood for downloading it right now. Let me just say that there is a built-in Markdown editor in VS Code. Is it Snap? Snap install VS Code. I should have it on here. Oh, boy. Another password typing. Oh, no. Who is telling me the version of Snap VS Code, classic confinement, and thus made plot. What the heck? The revision of VS Code was published under classic confinement. Is it way before? What does that even mean? I just am not a Snap person, guys. Come on, what am I supposed to do? Snap install VS Code, not code. Okay. Oh my gosh, I know. Probably guess my password after this. But oh well. Um, so, our always together. Uh. <laughs> the question is is he going unknown flag classic this is definitely getting clipped <laughs> oh that's pretty damn close to lamento good check good good guess very good guess hey look it looks like it's finding it um, but you got to admit, 
Snap has that pretty little thing here. Okay, this is all getting clipped, obviously. Type your password again. I promise I won't put it up on YouTube. <laughs> How to install VS Code on Ubuntu 18.4. How about I just did. <laughs> Code. Oh, really? That is so totally inappropriate for them to steal the name code for VS Code. This is the first time I have fired at VS Code in over a year. Uh, next time, open open screen key. <laughs> yeah. Wrong classic snaps, not properly containerized. I don't even know what that means. I probably should care. I don't. All right, so back to this video. So here we go through the magic of the internet and digital video editing. We now have Visual Studio Code, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, and and you guys can read the. No, look, there's Elementus password. He put it right there for you to see. So anyway, let's close this down, and I want to show you how easy it is to do a uh, markdown. You just do a new file, and you can do. Uh, in fact, it even has. Um, well, let's say uh, here is a file. Uh, see this little star, by the way, uh, this little thing here. You do not know how many people who cried because of the little circle, which means you have not been auto saved. File auto save. If you're a VS Code user, you might want to turn that on right away. Um, otherwise, you will be sad. Um, so it doesn't know where to si save it, though. I will just save it right here. <laughs> I'm really just trying to show you the Markdown editor. So, so here's the Markdown editor. And see this little thing over here? It, it You can split the editor, uh, but there is actually a previewer. The problem is, is it doesn't know what type of file it is because I was really dumb. And I'm going to try I'm going to close this out. I'm going to do this right. So here we go. So here we go. I'm going to have to go all the way back home. Here is a file. <laughs> you can tell how much I use VS Code, right? Do you see what I did there too? Through the magic of tab completion. Boom! Make sure you look at that. That's one way to actually uh, get to pass the over the wire uh, challenges. So we're going to move that to um, foo, of course, .md. And now I'm going to open with code. I'm going to code foo.md. And there's our glorious editor. And now that it sees that it's markdown, it does the fancy schmancy stuff. Uh, some thing. Uh, here, okay, and then see this you get this extra thing over here. You can preview uh, It's a pretty good previewer, but I gotta tell you it's not the best previewer uh, It's had some problems, but it's good enough for most people. Uh, it's, it's faster than the preview I'm gonna show you right now. In fact without any Preparation on my part. We're gonna go find the number one plugin for this that I prefer uh, I thought this was plugins extensions. They call it extensions now. So you can go get the pandoc um Plugin. Oh my gosh, I hate graphics applications. Uh, Pandoc. Uh, Pandoc Cider, VS Code, Pandoc, Renders Plugin Through, blah, blah, blah. I don't even remember which one it is. Pandoc for Markdown. I think this is the one. Uh, man, there's a lot more of them than I used to have before. I don't know which one is the best, but there are lots of them. And, and the one that I remember, and it's probably not worth my time to go through this with you guys, you can now, one of these actually allows you to set up uh, a CSS style sheet so that you can preview in real time what it's going to look like in the web. But there's lots of other ways to do that, such as actually previewing it with browser sync in your web, in an actual web browser, which is I would, what I prefer. And I'm going to, I'm going to save my favorite one for the last. Uh, but this is the way that most people are going to do their markdown previewing. All right. So let's see. What do you guys got to say? It should be doing it without, do that without the plugin. It did. Uh, I forgot how to use the mouse. I definitely did. Uh, <laughs> VS Code, Pandoc, and Pandoc Markdown Preview. Yes, there's a bunch of them. Uh, they're really, really good, by the way. Uh, and by the way, the VS Code Pandoc ones will also render math. And so let me show you about what, what I think is the... We're kind of going in the order of graphics to less graphics and quality. So the VS Code Pandoc plugin does do math rendering. Uh, we haven't talked about this editor segment is not necessarily about basic markdown or Pandoc Lite, uh, but it is about, you know, having the most capability out of your tool. And I really think you should pick a tool that does full Pandoc rendering. And so my other favorite one, however, despite it being proprietary, is Typora. And I have to confess, 
I have I have actually created a name, Escuratoire, which means French writing desk, because I wanted to make an, a free version of this. If anybody wants an idea for an open source project, please, please make Typora for us people who can't pay money. <laughs> so because this is so stinking cool. Uh, and you, there is a free version, but if you pay for it, it has, it requires you to have Pandoc installed. It has table generators. It has images in real time. Probably the coolest thing about Typora is that as you type your markdown, it immediately renders it right there. And then when you hover over that paragraph, so if you are a writer, if you're somebody who is dealing with a team who is just writers and want to get off of MS Word or something like that, I a tool like Typora might just be the answer. It it has it has really beautiful headers. It just it's like a distraction free mode. Uh, you know it does list beautifully. Uh, again, Typora also lets you set a CSS style sheet so you can send them around to everybody so they can see a live preview of exactly what they're going to see on the web page and I just can't compliment that enough the guys did a really great uh, thing here um, and I just you know I keep I just keep talking about them so uh, code fences are fully rendered with all that uh, it does mathematics and this is the main reason I suggest this above any other editor that's out there vs code pandoc plugin does this as well but if you truly have a group of writers uh and there's a good chance you're going to have an academic writer in in the in the mix who's going to want to use oh i don't know you know machine learning math notation uh the the international standard we're going to talk about this in the pandoc light uh um talk you know segment but this is really a big deal and this will actually show you an immediate rendering of the whole thing uh the only thing better than that probably is if you are an r user if you're an r programmer and a lot of math people are ha huh, didn't mean that pun but if you are uh, an r user uh there is something called r markdown which is pandoc the r language project us took on pandoc as its official documentation and it will end it will directly render uh, statistics and charts and whatever you want in R uh, by looking at a code fence and then immediately rendering it right after. It's super cool. And once, once again, once again, I'm going to make the case for Pandoc as being the universal standards for knowledge capture uh, because of those reasons. Uh, so mathematics, we have diagrams. They've added a number of other cutesy things to Typora that are not a part of any markdown standard. I'm not a fan of adding these, but if you are okay with it, you can. They do have a few plugins that you can activate. Uh, inline styles, this is probably the coolest thing. So you can highlight the style and then do it, and then it just works. Um, and, you know, and, and links, by the way, uh, it's really funny because they, if you look at the underlying markdown that that Typora makes, it's exactly like the the basic markdown I just mentioned. It makes big, long, singular lines, and it does inline references rather than like uh, separate re references. Um, and and let's see, inline styles. I have nothing to do with Typora, by the way. Uh, I just yeah, as as everything, I don't have anything financially to gain from anybody that I ever plug. Uh, so it does do uh, YML at the top. So you have front matter uh, if you want to, you know, if you start to do that sort of thing. I, I wish they had a little bit more syntax highlighting in their front matter. That's probably a, a regret. Uh, I, I suspect a lot of people who do these things don't have that. You can do reference links like this uh, and bibliography footnotes and stuff like that. That's all uh, advanced Pandoc things that I don't recommend unless you really, really need them. Uh, like if you're writing a textbook, like an actual textbook. Um, and so anyway, that's uh, so that's that's the tool I'm going to talk the most about besides VS Code. Uh, there are a couple online tools. Does anybody have a favorite that they want to mention right away? Do you guys, let's, 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 oh, R Markdown. Thank you. Let's go look at that. There's an online book about R Markdown. Uh, so it's bookmarked, bookdown.org, Y-I-H-U-I slash R Markdown. Um, there are a number of really great things uh, out there about this. Um, and this is another thing too. So, you know, we're going to talk about using the Pandoc to render it just from the command line. But if you take on the approach of using Markdown, you can then build it into whatever. And that includes, you know, rather complicated outlines and stuff like that, uh, that don't necessarily have to be one massively huge document. You can, you know, compose individual components of your knowledge node at the most finite level, you know, factoring them down to leafs and then 
combine them together through some sort of scripting or, or even some tools do it. And then you can put them all together. So, you know, they go into this. I think if you study this, you'll see that, that a lot of the reasons there, I am an avid opponent of Helvetica I, at that font level. I just makes me trigger. <laughs> This is like how I like, this is readable. This is not readable to me. Anyway, I, I really care about typefaces and stuff like that's a big deal. <laughs> okay, so let's, any other tools you guys got out there? A couple of more as you might might, might want to see. If you don't have any, if you don't have any other online tools for, for markdown testing, um, what was the one .io? You guys remember that? There's a, there's another .io out there. I called on the community to kind of send me some of these in advance before this video. And oops, and I just need to go look them up. Do you guys have any that you posted out here? Uh, Tmux demos. Uh, let's see, creating a PDF. Uh, that's on pandoc.org, which you definitely should go to. Uh, pandoc, of course, is probably the best way to preview it by just rendering it and then viewing it in your own preview. I'll show you that at the end. Uh, Remax is, I don't know what that's about. Carrot.io, I think that's the one I was looking for. Um, let's see, test, is this, a, is this Markdown? Hmm. I haven't used this one before. I can't vouch for it, but there you go. There's another one that was recommended. Um, there is one. I hope it pulls up Markdown Previewer. There's a really good one that I should know and I don't. <laughs> Markdown Live Preview. I think this is no. This is this is. There's lots of them online. So Markdown Live Preview. There's another one. Actually, I've been meaning to put all these in my little document here. So why don't I do that? Um, all right, so Markdown Live Preview. Uh, the first one I had was VS Code. Uh, uh, VS Code, so good review here. Uh, Markdown Plugin. And VS Code has actually two. Uh, it has, uh, look at this, I actually did what I talked about not doing very much. Uh, so you can use the Markdown Plugin. Um, I'm going to use the star there. And you the built a default markdown plugin, or you can use the um, the Pandoc uh, markdown plugins, uh, and then you could use uh, Typora as my my favorite. It, I almost did my whole site in Typora, but it was just too much extra work, and it didn't turn out to render the way I wanted necessarily, and it didn't allow templates. That's another thing is it does not allow you to do template rendering, which is a big part of this. But we haven't even talked about that. Pandoc templates are going to need their own boost uh because they are pretty involved they're super powerful just so, so just know that if you stick with pandoc light markdown or basic markdown you'll be safe with that uh so what else we got um that was a that was a fun one you guys mentioned besides this before this one what was it it was called um i hadn't seen it before uh carrot.io hadn't seen that carrot car carrot carrot they, they spell that right nope as in 20 carat.io. Um, uh, uh, Markdown Live Preview. And we're going to get there. We're going to talk about. Uh, I have no experience with Zettler. Um, Zet, was that hackmd.io? Haven't seen that one. Let's look at that one. Um, hack, hackmd.io. Uh, a lot of these you guys might have no better ones. If you are watching this, please put a link in the comments or write a comment if you've got a better one that you like, or even if you are the builder or maker of one of these. Um, this looks like it's a team collaboration. Don't know. Uh, I'm not going to slam it if I've never used it. Um, but, you know, it's kind of interesting that there's all this Markdown out there. Uh, markdown tools. I mean, if, if I need to make the case more that Markdown's really the way it's going, you know, there you go. Um, let's go ahead and, and do this properly. That's carrot.io. Uh, is it typeora.com or .io? Typora.io, of course, all the cool IO domains. Remember when IO was like such a cool domain? And then it kind of got taken over by Agario. <laughs> now everybody associates it with with uh, <laughs> WebSockets games. Oh, it's an IO. Oh, it must be a game then. I had Skillstack.io, and they're like, oh, is this a game? No, it's not a game. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Typora here. Zettler, I don't know what that is. I kind of want to find that though. Zettler. Zettler, is it a dot IO? Zettler dot Z E T T L. I do not like web browsers that have graphics. 
I know, I know. Uh-oh, the door has opened. Oh boy, a little bit of guacamole there for later. Um, thank you. So, Zettler, Zettler, a markdown editor for the 21st century. Ooh, it's open source. It's like one of those infinite loops. Oh, wow, it must be good. It's got a crazy awesome site. Yes, you can analyze me. That's fine. Download for Linux. Wow, this is new. I've never seen this. Wait, what's Zero Theory's favorite again? It's the. It starts with J. What is that one, guys? Do you guys remember that one? That one looks really cool, and it's open source. So I'm going to crease it. Joplin, yeah, thanks. So, Zettler, Z-T-T-L-R dot com. Uh, I've heard lots of good things about Joplin. Uh, I don't use it, never used it. I, again, I'm a command line guy, so I don't use any of that stuff. But uh, Joplin, uh, integrate well with reference managers. Ooh, academic writing. It looks like it might be good, yeah. So, I mean, that would be a big plus if you're working with um, the academic community a lot. Um, Joplin is free and open source. Oh, this has got, this is by, by far when I talk about, uh, HTML, uh, Markdown, uh, editors and helpers, uh, Joplin is the first thing that comes out of most people's mouth. <laughs> it's like, that's almost always the first thing that people I trust, uh, recommend. So I'm going to put it there, even though I'm not a, a fan of, of, you know, graphics editors in general. Um, so so there you go. It's got WGET and all that stuff. Man, we hit a lot of lot of things. So probably time to tell you the one that's the, probably not to be ignored. Uh, and GPL3 is open source. Did it say GPL3? <laughs> GPL3 is not open source. It is not. Did I say it? All right. So anyway, let's go. I'm going to show you something that might you might not have guessed. I actually showed this the other day. That's why it's all queued up. But good old GitLab. GitLab and GitHub both have editors that have preview mode in them. And so, I mean, here is like a map tool that I was working on. But if I click on edit, uh, you can see it has a preview mode. So you see that? Now it's important you see that actually this was me demonstrating how uh pandoc tables are not covered in gitlab that's what this is from but but for the most part you can click on preview and you can see right away including front matter uh that everything is covered and also was trying to make the point that um even though uh you know pandoc flavored tables are not rendered in gitlab and github they, they don't hurt anything either um so so yeah so th these are probably in fact when i teach particularly young people uh, you know, 12, 13 years old, they, they'll they use this to take all their notes and they don't even do anything else. You can just use this graphically until you learn how to use the command line and use how to, you know, take notes properly with VI. <laughs> right? So, uh, so that is the thing. I, I do want to just put that out here though. So, uh, so both GitHub, GitHub, Hab. Uh, so uh, Git, GitLab and GitHub both have um, built-in editors. And that's another reason to go with Markdown. All right. So let's see. I, I don't hear anything from anybody else. So this has kind of been uh, a fun overview of the different editors. Uh, the last one that I want to show is actually a Vim plugin uh, that I've customized. Uh, this doesn't exist anywhere else uh, except for in my GitLab repo. Um, and, and I'm going to sell it a little bit um, because I've been... I basically took over the Vim Pandoc syntax plugin because it sucked <laughs> and it had a lot of problems, uh, primarily um, among which was like, they didn't have any implicit styles. Uh, it didn't do, uh, it didn't do this. So watch, I'm going to put quotes around building. And even though Pandoc does smart quotes, uh, when it's rendered, there was no smart quote, uh, uh, previewing. And I really like that. That's like something I really wanted. So I added smart quotes that it, that's only in my plugin and uh, a couple other things. I mean, I, I don't even remember all the things that I added, but um, I fixed a number of bugs in the other one. Um, I won't get into the details <laughs> of, I mean, it is kind of self-sponsored. Uh, I, I, um, the paragraph sign 
yeah, para paragraph sign. I, I am not a fan of the paragraph sign. I turned it off on the default. Uh, there's a number of other things that turn off by default. The the color schemes were just really bad. In fact, that's what really triggered me because I, I, I went to submit uh, a more uh, tame color scheme for um, for the plugin and and I got shot down. Like, this doesn't belong in here. How dare you make two commits instead of one? And all the normal crap you get. And I just said, fork you, buddy. And <laughs> no offense. I said, I'm going to do my own. I'm going to take my fixes with me. So... Um, if you want that, I don't even know where it is. I have to go find it. So, so here you go. It's in RDVX Rob slash. Uh, I think it's. I think it's. I. I'm gonna go find it right now. How how prepared was I for this site? All right. So it's. Uh, I, I'll find it for you. I promise. I'll find it for you. If you go to my. I have way too many repos. I need to start deleting them. I want to clean them up. I've been wanting to do this forever, but I'm too busy making videos. Um, okay, so Vim, YAML Vim. Is this the one that I did? No, 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 no. This is a different one. This is this is a different one that I've been working on. Um, yeah, drive drive from YAML Vim. This is this is a different one. That's the one I've been building on. Don't use that. <laughs> I suck. I suck at doing videos. I'm just gonna say. So let's do this. I'm gonna try to find my own project. Did you guys find a link to my own project that I can't find? Uh, is it RW? Is it under RW? Please tell me it's not under RW. Is it RWX.GG? I think it might be. I don't know. Do you think I would know this stuff? But there's just too much stuff. Uh, you know, I know how I can find it. I can look at my FIMRC. <laughs> uh, I'm very ashamed. I'm ashamed. So it's in my VimRC. How about that, people? Um, so <laughs> I know it's here. Just be patient. There it is. There she blows. And it, you know what? I picked this big, long, stupid name because that's what they named it. Uh, I actually put Vimpandoc syntax dash simple because mine is simpler. Um, and I will post that to our chat as a present for logging into our live studio audience, <laughs> putting up with my crap. Here you go, guys. Uh, so there you go. Uh, remaps 999, not like this. You know how many Vim scripts I've written? One. <laughs> so so if you don't like my Vim script, bite me because I don't know Vim script. <laughs> Do it better. Do it better. Fix it for me. I'll tell you what, though. I knew enough to know that the one that was there before sucked. Okay. <laughs> so live audience perks. <laughs> yeah. So um, that is my favorite, my favorite, and I saved it for last. Uh, I, I'm gonna because I'm a good person. I'm gonna ask. I haven't heard any Emacs people. I will not berate you. I swear it. Who has a markdown? Is org mode markdown mode for Emacs? I don't even know. <laughs> everybody's like, everybody's like, I'm not gonna say anything. He's gonna yell at me. No, I just I don't. There are no Emacs people here. We made sure. <laughs> they, they were here for a while and then they left. So I, okay, I'm going to do a search. I got it. I mean, I want to be a good citizen at least. Isn't bad. Isn't bad, but not as good. It does have markdown mode. That's good to know. Okay. So let's see. Markdown, markdown mode for Emacs. I'm just going to do a little search here. Hey, look, Emacs has a markdown mode. Um, and who knows, it might not be bad. Let's go look. So let's look at this uh, Emacs Markdown mode. Okay, there you go. So Mark Emacs users, I'm going to put that in the list. I've never used it, but I want to be, you know, nice. I, I, As I've said, I am not against using Emacs. If you are never leaving your computer ever uh, and you are going to be happy on that computer, then use it. You shouldn't be happy. Don't let anybody give you crap about it. Uh, if you're everybody else in the world, though, then you should learn an editor that you can use on any system. And I'm going to stick by that. So lang md. Uh, and then where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Tools in this, this, this little thing that I'm making here. So lest I be a bigot, uh, I, I prefer to consider myself a discerning technologist 
<laughs> so there you go. Um, there's one that's a live preview. I too forgot that. Oh, Electron. Uh, Typara is used is using Electron. Typara is using Electron. Hmm. Uh, I I want a feeling it might be using Electron a little bit, but that's one of the reasons. You know what? Now that I remember it, that's one of the reasons that I considered making Escritoire. You can even steal my name uh, because I wanted to make one, even if it was an Electron app. Who cares? Um, it's fantastic, and it's a, a really great uh, visual uh, way to do that. However, I still believe the best way is live and let me just show you why that is uh so i don't know if you guys have been noticing this but if you watch me in over the shoulder mode this is the site on localhost 3000 right so if i wanted to change friend in real time uh to something else i can just change readme.md and say friend to uh something else uh whoops i spelled else wrong and then i could render it so i'm going to do kn render to render uh, the current directory and it changed live on my web browser and with no additional changes i want to change the i want to change the the the, the styles then i just change the styles you want the whole thing to be like so you make the whole background to be like cyan or something i mean i can just go in here here we go i'm gonna change my variables i'll change my background color to cyan there now you have a cyan background, like you would ever want that. Then I can change it back to pound 222. Okay, so I'm just gonna make the case for the best previewer uh, of Markdown is Browser Sync, uh, which I have built into my little preview tool. Again, for the studio audience, everybody gets a new car or something else. I'll just give you my KN tool uh, which will render your site with Pandoc and and it also has preview built in. Uh, so you can just, you know, preview your site as if you wanted to see it the way you wanted to see it and not in some pseudo web page rendering version of it that's in Electron, which we've identified as both what VS Code and Typora do. And I imagine the other ones. Why not just preview it in the web browser? Right, or else make a PDF and then render it with MU PDF if you're going to do that. That is my <laughs> KN script greater than car. <laughs> so that's going to end up wrap up this video for today. I'm going to eat my guacamole. Uh, thank you for watching, and um, I still have a good hour left of screwing around here. So I'm going to be here with the studio audience for a while. I'm going to start calling you the studio audience. I'm kind of getting attracted attached to that term. And, uh, but this video will, will pop up. I do have one more video that I'm going to try to make today. Uh, and that will be uh, the extras of Panda. Actually, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because I have to write it up. But if you guys want to sit around while I'm writing, <laughs> while I'm writing up uh, the knowledge node, the readme about all of the extras for Pandoc uh, that I think you should probably limit yourself to, uh, stick around and I'll be, I'll be doing that today. And that will wrap up... Um, uh, a lot of the stuff that that I have done for uh, Markdown and a plus sign, yay! Okay, take care and Mark. Okay, fish are going on. I'm eating my stuff and then I'm gonna be uh, back. Okay, people, thank you so much for joining me. <laughs>